Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. That was a weird, that was a weird hand thing. Help me! I can't do it. It's usually easier than this. I think what she meant is hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie, and in this video, Kira is going to take you through how she paints skin tones. As a relatively new painter, she has spent a lot of time working on this and is very proud and I think has accomplished something excellent that is also achievable for a newer painter. Hello, <laughs> welcome back to the channel. It's me again, you can't get rid of me. Um, I'm Kira if you're new and I'm gonna be showing you how I paint skin tones today. So um, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that most of my videos are super beginner friendly. This is from a beginner. I've stepped it up, I think. I've been practicing my skin tones so much. They're one of my favorite things to paint. So if you can follow along with the video and you can paint some skin tones too. These are the paints you're going to need for this particular tutorial. If you wish to do any other skin tones or skin types, just use the same techniques with different colors. You ready? You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> okay, step one. So we're gonna use Bugman's Glow. So I've got a couple of dabs on my wet palette. I wanna water that, the shiz down. So all over Bugman's Glow over um, I've put it over a zenithal base, but normally I would do it over black, but I know that would just take way too many layers to show you guys. So we've done the zenithal. I still don't really know the point of zenithal. I understand it in theory, but I definitely paint too thick. <laughs> it just doesn't show up through. I don't know. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's a magician's trick and it doesn't actually do anything. Don't correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you will in the comments. <laughs> right, this is going to take two layers, so we'll come back now when this is done. Applying multiple thin coats will give you much better coverage and will give you a better base to work up from. You want to water these down, not so that they're a glaze, but just so that they are nice and easy to work with. Next part is most important. We're going to mix all the colors on the palette. If they're not spreading too easily, you've not got enough water in there. I need a little bit more water here. A little bit more water here. There we go. So how many colors we got now? Probably one, two, three, four, five, six-ish. But we can keep mixing as we go. Right, so the next part is to add on Reichland Flesh Shade. So we're going to be quite heavy with this. I'm just going to whack all of this on top, like so. I like to go quite heavy with it, and then if it's settling too much, you can dry off your brush and soak in the bits you don't want. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So down here, it's all right to have a little bit, but we don't want too much. So you can see it's easy enough to just soak up. This stage really helps define the model and shows you where those shadows and where the highlights should be placed. Welcome back. <laughs> Right, so that was the easy part. Cadian, no, Bugman's. Bugman's down, two layers, however many layers you need until it's opaque. Um, then some Reichland on, wait for that to dry. Um, so I added a little bit more water to each of these colors and spread them out a little bit more. So we still have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six-ish colors, kind of five. It doesn't matter as long as you have a nice blend of all those three or four or five skin shades that you want to use. So because Reichland has darkened down our Bugmans a little bit, I'm going to go back in with a little bit more Bugmans on a smaller brush. And we're going to be popping this down basically all over, but um, ignoring the recesses where the Reichland has gathered that little bit. This is, um, it's not a hugely necessary step, but it is gonna make it look a little bit better. Just make sure you do avoid those recesses and keep the paint out of the shaded areas. I always kiss it. <laughs> right, the next part is all kind of one big step. Now, I've not really thought about what I'm gonna do, but I always end up doing the same thing, so bear with me. I don't know how this is gonna go. So we've done Bugman's, Bugman's, Reichland, a little bit of Bugman's. <laughs> so now we're going on to the half Bugman's, half Cadian flesh tone mix. So this is quite watered down on the palette. So I like to mix it up again on the palette and then dab the brush on the tissue. So we're painting the upper part of that muscle where the light would hit. And then you're gonna quickly wipe your brush on the tissue, go back with the Bugman's and then blend that down into the color underneath it and sort of wiggle that back and forth until it blends. 
And then if you find you've gone too much with the bug wins again, wipe the brush on tissue, back with that mix, and then do it again. Okay, so that's kind of our next bit. Now he has a couple of scars there. We'll fix those up later. The reason I don't wash my brush constantly is because it's gonna water down the paint too much and because we're working quickly. And because we're using a mishmash of colors, it doesn't really matter if the paint on your brush changes the color of the paint on the palette, it's fine. We don't mind that. So we're gonna go back and do this muscle. So we're going with the 50-50 mix again. We're gonna wipe that down. That is a little bit thin again, but that's fine. So then we'll go back with the Bugmans and blend that down underneath as well. If the muscles are small, you can work on more than one at a time as well. If you're worried your blend doesn't look that great at the start, that's okay, because you can do two layers of this and that will tie it all together. Also, the, they obviously dry a little bit darker than they uh, appear at first. So don't panic if it doesn't look great straight away. But working quickly is key and you can go back and forth between the two colors and just keep smooshing them. Smooshing is the best way I would describe this method of painting. Using the Kira coin phrase smooshing, you should now start to see the model progressing. Now that that's dry, we're going to do the next thing again, the same thing again with the next step up. So if you look at the palette, you can really start going up to any of these colors as long as you're working your way back down again. So I could start with plain Cadian next, but I'm probably going to use a little bit of Kislev in there because it'll just um, speed the process up a little bit. I'm going to use this kind of color here get the excess off and exact same process again. I'm actually going to start somewhere a little bit simpler, like his back. I want to start up here and highlight even less of the muscle now, but all the tops of the muscle. This is quite thin, so I'm happy enough to just glaze it on there. Then if you see a line where it's not blended, you can go back to the color before, wipe off the excess on the brush and just blend that in. But because this is quite thin, we don't need to do that. So. There's barely any on my brush. Just getting all the tops of those muscles and just keep smooshing. Constant smooshing is the key to painting. This whole style really does require some practice. So don't be disheartened if your model isn't turning out how you want to, just keep trying. Now that that's done, we're gonna go on to Kislev with a tiny bit of flayed one flesh in it. Now, I'm gonna talk you through what I do with the tissue here because the tissue looks a bit messy, but basically you don't wanna put way too much paint on the model. So when I mix a color, so if I want this, mix it a little bit of that, then I just wipe it on the tissue and get going really fast. You don't want much paint um, to go on at once. So we're gonna use this lighter color now. I'm gonna wipe off a good bit. There's less blending to do this time. Um, the paint is very thin. I basically am glazing, sort of. You'll see what I mean. There's so little paint on there. It's almost like it's not a glaze. This is gonna be pinpointed right where the lightest parts of the muscle are. Right at the top of the muscles here and just sort of, you can even poke it, like poke, 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 poke. <laughs> I'm sure that has an actual name uh, that I don't know. But this is gonna separate out between the lightest point and the darkest point. Now, if it's a big wide area like this and you find it does need a tiny bit of blending, boom, you've got the colors before it right here on your palette already. Sometimes it helps to go a color even darker because you've got that light color on the brush already. And just smoosh it, just smoosh it till you can't see a dead clean line anymore. So then we're going with the lighter color again. I don't think he needs too much of this here. He does have some serious pecs. Do we highlight the nipple? I think we do, we highlight the nipple. We'll just go like, boop. Oh, I kind of wish I hadn't done that now. <laughs> That's too, too much nip. We're going right in just a tiny bit. There you go. Um, and we'll do his little like freaky ass neck muscle there as well. Lifting his neck weights to the back. Boom. Again, here we're gonna to need to blend it because it's a big, large piece. Now the face is kind of its own beast really, but I'll show you quickly what I do for that. It follows the exact same principles, just highlighting those areas that would need it the most. This is easier if you've ever contoured your own face. You know that your cheekbones are gonna want some highlighting. And then strangely enough, you wouldn't think with the lower jawline there as well, because that's going to contrast those little, well, I don't, I don't even know what they're called. I would say that's where you put your contour though. What is it? What is this? What? 
I don't know. And then same on this side. I would say his ears, but I'm starting to think he doesn't have one. Is that an ear? I don't know. He does have spikes coming out of his head. So I'm not highlighting those because I'm probably going to paint those silver or something. There we go. So I'm going in with flayed one now, which is the lightest color I'm going to use. You can go to a shabdi. I'm going to highlight his little nose there. That's just cute. Highlight his little cheekbones because he has some nice cheekbones. That. And then it's good to sort of take it down. Have a look all over. That's looking good. At the end, if you notice any parts of me blending, it's fine. All your colors are right there on the palette already. I think this is looking great. So I think this chest muscle, I'm not too sure what's going on with it, but I don't really know what chest muscles look like. <laughs> we'll cut that bit out. <laughs> you have chest muscles, just not like warband chest muscles, which is a good thing. This is an unrealistic body type for today's man. <laughs> Now, I know there's a lot more work you can do with faces. I know some people use blue. You can pop that in around the lips and stuff like that. I'm not going to. We're keeping it simple. Um, I don't tend to go all the way up to the lightest skin tone for the head. It just, it's difficult. <laughs> and I don't do things if they're difficult. With this method, there's always gonna be times where you think you've ruined it, but you, you haven't. You can literally go back to the color before and fix everything that you've done. Except probably in this instance, just because I said it. And there we go. Done, easy. How easy is that? I'm gonna get the rest of this painted and you'll be able to see what it looks like as a whole. I think Kira has done a brilliant job on this and it looks excellent. That actually didn't take all that long to do, so fear not if yours is taking a little bit longer. Don't worry, just keep practicing, just keep trying. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much to Kira for helping here. She's done a cracking job. If you enjoy her stuff and enjoy what she does, do make sure to check out her live streams on Twitch. All links can be found below. I'll let her round out the video. And there we go. That's it. Mr. Spiky Fingers is complete. <laughs> and I'm fairly happy with how he turned out. Um, hopefully you learned something from that video. Um, the beauty of the smooshy method is that you can't really mess it up. You can smoosh forever. Um, it's always fixable. Just keep going at it till you're happy with it. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. If you want to see more, check out my Instagram, check out my Twitch where we paint these sort of things all the time. And um, those Warcry models are absolutely amazing to paint. Uh, really enjoy them. So I'm off now to probably buy some more Warbands. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.